Hello and welcome to this Photolab overview video. Photolab is found in Serif Web Plus, Page Plus and Draw Plus, and it's a powerful way of manipulating your images within these programs. So for example, you can do a simple white balance or exposure correction, you can use a number of presets to achieve a desired effect, or you can add certain adjustments, such as blurring or vignetting. So we've got a picture of a snail here, and first of all, we'll just take a tour of the Favorites tab up here. Now, favorites are a number of presets that you can use to quickly achieve a certain effect. Uh, some of them actually combine two or more Photolab filters. So, for example, we'll have a look at Old Photo. And this achieves a sepia effect with a very strong vignette. Now, something I'd just like to bring to your attention is the AB Split Preset tool, found on this top toolbar up here. When we click it, we can see that we have a before and after preview. And we can dynamically click drag to see the difference that the filters have made. If we look at the little fly out here, we can also see that we have the option to split it vertically. Or in fact, we can tile them. Again, horizontally and vertically. So if we want to get rid of one of our favorites, we can either delete the filters individually, like so, or if I just apply another favorite here in tents, we can see the effect it has. Let's just go back to single preview mode. We can actually use the Control and Z shortcut on the keyboard, like so, and that will basically remove all of the filters added to this list. So we've looked at a couple of favorites. Now let's look at adjustments. Now a good effect to choose here, found further down, is Split Tone. And this basically splits the shadows and the highlights into different tonal values. So what we can do here is tweak the hue sliders. You can see we're affecting the shadows here. We can punch the saturation up, and for the highlights we can go for a sort of a yellow tone, and again punch the saturation up, and then finally we can alter the balance, which is probably the key feature here, because this allows you to fine-tune the tonal values. So we can see now we're getting more of a bluish, pinkish tint to the shadows. Again, we can use the before and after preview to see our effects, or you might want to preview each effect individually, which is especially useful if you're using one of the favorites and it's added one or more effects to the trial zone. You can simply turn them off here. So another important thing to note with the trial zone is that once you're happy with the new effect, you have to commit it. Now what happens if we try and add another effect as well as split tone? Let's find out. If we choose depth of field, We'll have our effect as desired, but notice that it's actually gotten rid of the split tone effect. So every time you add another effect to the trial zone, it will overwrite the previous effect you had in the trial zone. Now that we're here with depth of field, let's take a look at the effect. But first, just a little tip, if you want more working space for your image, you can actually collapse this tab here. Now the images tab is for when you have more than one image open and you wish to jump between them. So we can just simply click here to collapse the tab, and then we've got more working space for our image. So let's zoom in and take a look at what we're doing with this effect. Essentially, we're blurring parts of the image and then telling the effect which part should be sharp. And at the moment, as we can see, most of our image is blurry, which is not what we want. So. We're going to play with these two sliders here. The radius is the amount of blur, and let's put that right up for a really blurry effect. And as we can see, it's rendering here. That's your progress bar. We're then going to change the F distance to try and make the snail shell sharp. So if we start dragging it here, we'll gradually see the snail shell 
becoming sharper. And we can also see a rippling effect, which will help us gauge where that point is, the sharpest point. So just about here, we've got it to the center of the snail shell. I'll let it render. And now we can see the snail shell is sharp. And the rest of the image has been blurred. So if we zoom out and then do a before and after preview, we should see that greater parts of the image are blurred. So for example, look at just underneath the snail shell and you'll see it's wildly out of focus, having used the depth of field effect. So let's get rid of this effect and go back to a single image preview. And now we're going to look at the effects tab. So we've got a number of effects on here and we will look at quite a popular one, the lens vignette. Now, by default, this has a positive intensity, which adds a bright vignette. We can, of course, tweak this to minus values in order to give it a dark vignette. And, of course, change the midpoint to control how far into the image the vignette goes. Now we can see various adjustments on the right-hand side. White balance, lighting, curves, and unsharp mask. These filters over here are really more for corrective purposes. So let's just quickly look at some other effects available to us. Uh, one of them, for this particular image of this lovely dead wasp, might be, under render, Diffuse Glow. Diffuse Glow adds a lovely blur to highlights, and it's particularly useful in this image, if we just turn the effect off, because we have a rather dull background not quite pure white, and we've got some marks here as well. So, as well as casting a lovely halo effect around the wasp, this diffuse glow effect is actually going to help make the background look a bit more exciting. So we can adjust the intensity here. And as we can see, that's perhaps a little overkill, but it's a very nice effect. And again, we can control the blur, which if I just zoom in, We can see the effect it has. And if you want to control the overall strength of the image, you can use the opacity slider. So we can see the effect being taken off and we'll gradually add it back. So for this image, which is very vivid and punchy, we might want to see if that translates into a black and white version. So on the adjustments tab, We'll choose black and white film. And as we can see, it's converted it instantly. Now we can play around with how each color is mixed into black and white. And as we can see, using the red slider, deepens this area here. If we just take this effect off, look at the colors. We've got blue in the background and mostly reds, oranges, and some green for the mid to foreground. So, if we try the orange slider, we can see a big difference. So we can actually make the foreground much, much brighter, make it stand out more. And the cyan and blue in the background, we can really darken. Now, be careful if you're editing, especially lossy formats like JPEG, we can see some pixelation in the sky in the background here. Essentially, we're trying to manipulate the information too much at this point. So if we tone that down a bit and then turn the effect off. So that is quite a contrast to if we apply the effect again, the original settings it gives us. I'll just control Z to get that back. Well, that's all for this tour of Photolab. For more information, the help documentation provided with PagePlus, WebPlus, and DrawPlus will provide detailed information about each filter available. Thank you for watching.